Information Station, 1370 WOCA. Five minutes after nine o'clock. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, Donald Trump announced his candidacy yesterday. I know everybody's talking about it. One of the things that he focused on was immigration, especially across the Mexican border. He uh, obviously, obviously made it appear that he would take a very strong position if he, in fact, was ever elected to be president. And uh, and it's a, it's a it's been a debate for a long time. And the the one thing that I, I've often said is that, and, and I know Robin, you and I seem to disagree on this one thing is that while I think there should be we should follow the rules etc um, when there's a, t- a two year old who comes into this country Ill- with illegal parents and grows up and never becomes legal and goes to school here and and etc and, and is working here now it is an adult is working for the fire department or something it's kind of crazy to say well you're not really a citizen so we got to send you back to a country you never even knew that to me that's that's the word some, something has to be done for those folks and and maybe our guests won't even agree. I don't know. Uh, David N. Strange is on the phone. He is an attorney, a managing partner at the law firm of Wittenberg, Strange, and Walker, PC. He's an adjunct professor of law at the Texas Tech University, and I think that's where he is right now, as a matter of fact. Uh, he's a, uh, going to talk about his book. It's called A Conservative and Compassionate Approach to Immigration Reform, Perspectives from a Former U.S. Attorney General. David Strange, good morning, sir. Good morning. Thank you. Where are you right now? Where are you calling from? I'm calling from uh, Lubbock, Texas, where Texas Tech is located. Okay. Well, thank you for being on there. How is the weather there? Did you, did you get a lot of water? It, well, I, I just uh, arrived here to Lubbock yesterday or, or Monday, um, and what I've been told is there's been just a, 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 a deluge of, of rain for of course that's a matter of perspective <laughs> for Lubbock it's been a lot of rain hmm. let, let me ask you about um, the the illegal immigrants who are they I mean we, we always envision that they are poor Mexicans taking jobs in, far, in fields you know picking vegetables etc is that inaccurate um, n- no, not entirely. Um, and so, so you know, to address the question of who are they, we look first, or we can look first to the source countries, um, M- M- Mexico being the leading source country. But interestingly enough, Canada is a huge source for illegal immigrants uh, in the United States. Canada, um, I- I- Canadians have what's called the visa waiver program that they can uh, benefit from. In other words, they can enter the country just by virtue of having a Canadian citizenship. Um, many of them overstay. Uh, um, but <clears throat> uh, And then, of course, Central Americans. Um, but unquestionably, uh, the economy is a draw. It's a huge draw from, from the poorer Central American uh, uh, countries. Uh, uh, but, but you're right to focus on this. Our, our immigration laws and policies unquestionably have a, have a broad impact. Economic wealth, Homeland stability and national defense are all interrelated to immigration, um, and in our immigration laws and policies will have profound effects on our national security as we move forward in the coming years. In its national security application, immigration law is unique. It, it is at once a mechanism to ensure the United States maintains a leading role in the world economy while also keeping out and removing those who represent a danger to the national community. So that goes back to your question. Who are these people? And yeah. why, are, why are they here? Yeah. Um, so, so now you've got reports of uh, finding Muslim prayer rugs um, along the southern border, uh, you know. Of course, that's not a that's not a statement against the religion of Islam, but but it's it it addresses well. You know, is ISIS really coming into the country? Right, right, absolutely, and it is something to be concerned about. So, are we needing new laws, or are we needing to enforce the ones that already exist? That that's another great question. I, I think it's a combination of both. So let's let's look at 
first uh, enforcing the laws that already exist. <laughs> in our book, which you mentioned, you know, we wrote it in the summer of last year. It, it wasn't published until uh, November of 2014, but we wrote it just before the, the summer. And we caution against uh, broad-scale executive action because that can lead to a disrespect for the rule of law in, in pressures on our southern border. So so then then we've got the uh, the summer surge last year um, with, with, you know, really it really started picking up after uh, President Obama's uh, uh, June 2012 DACA, Deferred Action for Childhood Arrivals announcement, um, people get this idea, well, if you come to the United States, you're going to get a permiso, is what they were saying. Well, you know, in many ways, that 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 uh, idea was spread by the criminal alien, uh, the criminal element. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, coyotes, for example, you consider, you know, five thousand uh, dollars for a family, um, and you multiply that by some sixty thousand people. They're making a killing uh, in terms of bringing people to the country. So they're pay- the ones. Uh, uh, who pays that money? I've always, always wondered this: the the money that the yeah, the people get paid who are bringing the people in here. Who who pays that? These are poor people. Well, um, many people are coming because they have family or friends or other connections here in the United States who send money, you know, via Western Union or some other some other way to uh, uh, mm. uh, people in other countries. That's one. And then two, some people, uh, you know, in their home countries take out loans or they 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 spend their lives saving up money. But then, but then, sort of really nefariously, uh, some people are brought with the promise to pay back their debt, and that leads hmm. to, um, you know, uh, human human uh, trafficking, uh, trafficking, and, yeah, and other yeah. abuses. Okay, so um, so so a number a number of ways. Okay, so let me, let me tell you my family's story, and it's probably very common. Uh, my grandfather wanted to move here from Germany, bef- like in the, in the mid twenties, nineteen twenties, because Germany was not doing too good. He was looking for a place to find good work, so he came here. Uh, his family, which included his wife, which was my grandmother, his daughter, which was my mother, who was three years old, and his son, my uncle, who was six at the, the at the time, had to wait a full year to come over because my mother had some kind of a fever or something like that. The, yes. the point I'm trying to make is is that the, he had to have strict rules to come over in the first place. He had to have a sponsor. He had to follow the rules, fill, fill out the forms, do, do it right, and then he could come over. And they couldn't come over until everybody was healthy. Exactly. L- let alone pass a test yeah. to, to prove that they're not going to be shooting up people, you know? Yeah. Okay, yeah. so so that was one example, and I'm sure that was representing many, many people, probably some who got turned oh, away and never could come in, right? Mm-hmm. So wh- why did yeah. we stop doing that? Why did we stop screening every single individual that came into this country? Okay, well, now you've really hit on a nerve. And, and when I say a nerve, in many ways, political correctness. Um, about a hundred years ago, uh, plus Henry Cabot Lodge. I don't know if you remember him from from history. He wrote a, a book. I'm sorry, a law review article um, uh, touching on the restriction of immigration, saying, "Look, we need to be careful of who we allow into this country, including health related grounds." And so, so that was that was probably the hiccup with your um, with your mother, who was three years old at the time, because right. we got health related grounds. Um, but but you know, to, it, we live in a very different world today. So you know, my reference to uh, the, the the Muslim prayer rugs and and ISIS. Well, you know, I'll, I'll probably be criticized for being Islamophobic for saying that. I, I'm I'll probably be criticized for perpetuating hate speech. Um, well, so so you know, Henry Cabot Lodge's point was, we're a sovereign nation. We, we have not only the right to regulate immigration, but we have a moral responsibility to regulate immigration. If we abdicate uh, regulating immigration, we are not ab- we're not only abdicating our sovereign um, uh, right as a nation, but we're abdicating our moral responsibilities. Okay. Um, and so... Yeah. Oh, and I, every time I say something, I, I hate to make it seem like I'm interrupting you, but and, and I guess I am, and I apologize for that. But I, I just have a few things to say. I, 
I think my own opinion is that I'm very strong in favor of simply following the rules and, and, and making people follow the law, including the people who are hiring them, by the way, including those people, because I, I'm guessing that there are some nice ones, like Donald Trump said yesterday, <laughs> there are some nice ones, but, but I'm guessing that there's an element of guilt on the part of the people who hire them for a lower wage, and I know that because we've had stories like that. But, but here's where I become a liberal on this one, and this is where Robert and I disagree. Let's say, for example, my grandfather didn't follow the rules. Let's say he was illegal, but he, he was legal, but let's say he wasn't. Now my mother and uncle come over, and they're just innocent children. They end, they end up going to school. They end up going to getting jobs. They get married. Next thing you know, somebody's knocking on the door saying, hey, you never were legal. You got to get out of here. Mm. That, that's who I feel the compassionate for is, is those and there are examples of them they were in the news they're in the news every time this subject comes up sure um and you're not alone in that regard and and we address that in in our book as well i, I would like to point out um you know for the very first time under the obama administration the dhs took the position that minor children are subject to permanent uh a permanent ground of inadmissibility because their parents um, have brought the, the the child into the country on as few as two occasions. So that that could be you know a two year old and even younger, mm. and that baby is permanently inadmissible. And it's the Obama administration that, with the DHS, that first took that position. Um, and so I think most Americans would view that as sort of draconian. Um, that that that's just not sensible and that doesn't work, especially if that kid grows up and you know invent, invents the cure to the common too bad, sorry, because of what your parents did, you have a permanent ground of inadmissibility. And so that's a, that's a, sympathetic, uh, that's a sympathetic case. And just on the side, um, I would like to say, you know, the, the Democratic Party has taken charge of this dialogue, and the Republican Party is, is just sort of reactionary, and it makes them, look, uh, like, makes them look disorganized. In many ways, they're being portrayed as racist and nativist, etc. And history really doesn't show that to be true. Ronald Reagan, you know, uh, with the Reagan administration, we have um, amnesty and an update of the registry provision. We, with George H.W. Bush, we have the 1990 Immigration Act, which expanded the number of immigrant visas. We have the Child Status Protection Act with the George W. Bush administration. In, in, in contrary to that, IRA IRA w- was passed during the Clinton administration, which has been very hard on immigrants, leading to permanent grounds of inadmissibility. In the Obama administration, which I just mentioned, with the DHS took the position that these minor kids have permanent grounds of inadmissibility. So the, the, my, what I'm getting at is the way the media portrays the Democratic Party and the Republican Party in this whole issue of immigration is very misleading. Um, but going to your mm. earlier question, yeah, that's true. I, I think... I, I think our laws work in many ways. the the uh, The Immigration Nationality Act has been has been around a long time. Uh, we can we can make a few minor adjustments to the INA to reflect, um, you know, the realities of today and go forward with real immigration reform. Go go into your your specific issue of of the kids. Well, at some point they they no longer become innocent. You know, when they grow right. up, they know. Um, um, Right, you know, and so so um, the uh, the activist who who says, you know, I am an American, um, the, he, he's not entirely innocent, and, and moreover, he's pushing this idea of, well, you know, we have this, we have a right, we're Americans, we have a right. It may be unfair, it may be it may be unkind, it may be even un, unwise, um, but 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 it is not contrary to a sovereign nation's right to regulate immigration, and so. We should be careful um, with with um, bending too much. Nevertheless, we recognize that you know we've got 11 to 12 million people here unlawfully. Up to you know if you if you listen to someone like Ann Coulter, it's more like 30 to 40 million. You know, and who knows? Who knows? But right, there's a lot. Right, right. Um, so so many that we're not going to be able to deport everybody. And we introduce in our book an idea of a pathway to nationality oh, versus a pathway to citizenship. And that's what I want to hear about, because I knew that mm-hmm. the, that was coming, because oh, I have notes here. Um, and I do want to hear that. So let's take a little break and uh, a little breather. We've got the weather it's, and a few things, and then we'll be right back. And uh, very fascinating subject. David and Strange, thank you for being with us. Don't go away, though. Uh, we'll be right back okay, with, with David Strange, be, because... 
there is something compassionate about that element. Now, we don't want any bad guys here, but, but if there's somebody here who needs to have a little break, maybe innocently, maybe not so innocently, but we'll find out when we come back. The weather is brought to you by MyFWC.com. Safe boating is no accident. Partly sunny today with a thunderstorm in spots this afternoon. Our high 90 to 97. Clear to partly cloudy tonight, low 73 to 76. Tomorrow, partly sunny, a thunderstorm around, mainly inland. Our high 90 to 95. Friday, clouds, some sun with a few thunderstorms around again, mainly inland. High 91 to 94. From the Florida Weather Center, I'm meteorologist Steve Travis. Hi, this is JP from Penn Flooring here in Ocala. I would like to invite you to come in and visit our spacious showroom where we have solutions for every style and budget. From wall-to-wall carpet to hardwood floors and tiles, we have an unsurpassed selection of flooring. At Penn Flooring, we've provided quality customer service with a family touch for over 25 years. Visit our website at penflooring.com or come by our showroom, 1201 Southwest 17th Street, just over the bridge. Penn Flooring, quality customer service with a family touch. The Coke Zero 400. It's where American pride meets NASCAR history. This year, you can catch a glimpse of NASCAR history yet to come with the all-new seats and all-new views of Daytona Rising. And be sure to stick around for one of the Southeast's largest fireworks shows after the race. Kids 12 and under are $10 for the Coke Zero 400, powered by Coca-Cola, Sunday night, July 5th. New seats are selling fast. Guarantee yours now at 1-800-PIT-SHOP or DaytonaInternationalSpeedway.com. Is your credit headed in the wrong direction? If so, Florida Credit Union can help turn it around. If the signs are reading, missing payments, maxing out cards, or borrowing from financing companies, it's time to steer your credit to safety. Pull into a Florida Credit Union today and let us help you map out a personalized credit management plan. Get a free credit report analysis and advice to help you consolidate wisely. A better plan can get you to a better place. Florida Credit Union, connecting your money to your life. Federally insured by the NCUA. 22 minutes after 9 o'clock. This is just never enough time to talk about this subject. Uh, okay, so let's get back on, on track. Uh, once again, David Strange is on the phone. He's, he's one of two authors of a book called A Conservative and Compassionate Approach to Immigration Reform. We need to mention the other author who is... I have it here somewhere. Uh, Alberto R. Gonzalez, a former counsel to the president of the United States Attorney General under George W. Bush. All right, uh, David. So the the question would have been, the ne- the natural next question would have been before the break was, w- what I was going to mention and sort of kind of ask is, Marco Rubio had some kind of a plan where the, the firefighter who was uh, came here when he was two, he's now 35, and he never became legalized. There was a, some way to test him to make sure he wasn't a threat, and then if he passed all the tests, he would become a citizen. Is is that sort of what you've got in mind? Well, in terms of of, of addressing this quagmire we're in, um, in, in leading to some sort of reform, in, in um, this, whereby we can get you know these millions of people out of the shadows and and and, and take off. Um, pressures from our our uh, immigration officers at the at the border in in our criminal uh, in our law enforcement officers just across the board yes but in terms of his specific plan no um, because we we thought that was just way too cumbersome he uh, that 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 gang of eight plan that that puts people on a pathway to citizenship um, that that you, you know first leads to some sort of a, a conditional status and then and then some, some um, you know, measures have to be met, and you know, after ten years, if the measures are met, then maybe they can acquire lawful permanent status. But maybe not if the measures aren't aren't met. Um, but certainly, in terms of um, weeding out, um, you know, the 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 wheat from the chaff, so to speak. In in terms of, um, you know, we we certainly don't want to provide immigration relief to um, you know criminal aliens. That's that's a, right. that's an obvious. Right, right. Um, but 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 in terms of those people who are contributing to our economy, um, in, in in the humanitarian aspect of 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 uh, you know the these people, then then yes. Um, but but that but the the gang of eight plan was a pathway to citizenship, and we we proposed for consideration a pathway to nationality. Um, and uh, I would I would point out that all U.S. citizens are nationals. 
So, for example, if you have a U.S. passport, it says, you know, what's your nationality? Um, um, American. Um, but not all nationals are citizens. Um, so, uh, so, so there's a there's a, a a difference there in terms of of rights. Um, but uh, since not since nationals are not citizens, they can't vote in federal elections. For example. I should be clear, however, that non-citizen nationals are protected by the Bill of Rights. They enjoy most of the rights and privileges afforded to U.S. citizens. Um, Critics will undoubtedly argue that a pathway to nationality would be unfair and result in a two-tier system whereby some people in our community are, are granted greater rights than others, you know, especially those people who want, um, you know, full citizenship so that, so that uh, immigrants can be included completely in our polity. Um, you know, those people, there's a lot of criticism saying, well, um, you know, the Democratic Party wants more, more votes. Um, well, but the Democratic Party responds, no, we just want, you know, compassion. We want um, uh, status for these people. Well, then they shouldn't complain about a pathway to nationality because it gives them the status uh, 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 that that they want for these people. I would also point out that, in fact, we already have such a two, two-tier system, and it's worked effectively for generations. Lawful permanent residents, green card holders, have never been fully included within our polity, and most lawful residents lead many productive lives in this country. Um, and to be sure, not all lawful permanent residents are eligible to seek uh, uh, citizenship. You, you know, they, they, may not, they may not be eligible um, hmm. be, be, because they can't meet the basic language or civics requirements, because they lack good moral character, because they cannot or do not want to swear allegiance to the United States, or they simply refuse to pay the, the, required, filing, uh, the required filing fee for citizenship. But I, I would be careful to point out that in our plan um, for nationality, it doesn't preclude eligible non-citizens from seeking other forms of relief that might lead to U.S. citizenship. And nationality, um, you in know, in, in, this, in, this, in this way is, is proposed as a compassionate form of relief for those people who, who you uh, made reference to earlier. You know, the kid who was brought here grows up and is a productive member of our society. You know, the salt of the earth type people yeah. who, you know, we, we, don't ha- we don't have clean hands here, um, meaning the American, um, the, the, uh, the United States itself. We have an insatiable e- economy um, that, that, is re- that is wanting more and more workers. Um, you know, so, so not only do we have employers who are hiring um, immigrant workers, but we have consumers who prefer a head of lettuce that costs a dollar rather than five dollars. You know, so we don't completely have clean hands here. And, and, and a pathway to nationality would be an extraordinary gesture of generosity, one that I'm aware of no other country in the world offering to its undocumented immigrants. Hmm, very interesting. Uh, you do, you're getting reaction from the caller, from the listeners, and I wanted you to finish before I went to the call. So if you're okay, I'm going to connect a few of them with you. Is that all right? Sure. All right. Uh, David Strange again is our guest. Good morning. Thank you for waiting. You're on the air now with David. Uh, good morning, David. Uh, good morning. You know, all this all sounds well and good, except for the one fact that we have a government that, as far as I'm concerned, is anti-American. And it doesn't matter whether there's an R or a D in front of their names. We have laws passed by same said government, i.e. the 1986 immigration law, which everybody knows was passed and signed by then President Ronald Reagan, but nobody has a clue what's in it. And if they would just dust it off and shake it out, there is the the basic uh, rules to follow as far as people here. Now, I am more or less along with uh, Larry on that, that the people that are, are here and productive and more or less played by our rules other than the fact that they are illegal. And as far as I'm concerned, illegal is illegal. All right, okay. let David, let David uh, come in because we're just like up against the clock. Thank you, Sonny. Uh, David, just come in. We've got like 40 seconds. I apologize for the time. Yeah, that's okay. 
point well taken. He makes a, a, a good point. You know the the old saying, and uh, politicians interested in only one thing, and that's to to be a rele- reelected. Yeah. Um, I don't think we have a broken immigration system. Every year, about a million people immigrate to the United States. In fiscal year 2013, there were 160 million non-immigrant admissions. Um, that, that's that's huge. But if you take the position that we should just deport all the illegals, or or you 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 know we should do nothing, you're going to lose. Thank you, David. We- Uh, We'll be right back. Fox News Radio. I'm Lillian Wu. Tropical depression bill. Still a threat to the Lone Star State as it moves in. Flash flood warnings are posted even up into central Texas in and near Austin, places which already flooded out last month when the rains came. Fox Radio's Evan Brown. We're learning more about the man accused in the Draw Mohammed contest shooting. Authorities call Abdul Malik Abdul Karim off the charts dangerous. Court papers say Karim hosted Elton Simpson and Nadir Sufi in his home in January and gave them the guns they used in the May shooting. An FBI special agent who spoke at the hearing in federal court said a 2012 investigation into Kareem found he had a terror training document on his computer and said he wanted to attack the Super Bowl when it was in Arizona this year. Fox Radio's Tanya J. Powers and a decline in the number of babies born in the U.S. may be over. 